Agents. How exactly does one use the most effectively? Which abilities are worth using and which are better forgotten? Hi, my name is Mr. Smartonkey and in this video we're going to go over the ins and outs of agents in Total War Shogun 2. Let's start with the basics. There are three agent types in Shogun 2. The first agent type is the Metsuke, who is available to every clan except for the Ikoiki. The Tokugawa gain a plus 2% bonus to all Metsuke actions. The second agent type is the Monk, of which there are three versions. The regular Buddhist Monk, who is available to all clans except for the Ikoiki and Otomo, the Eko Monk, who is available exclusively to the Ikoiki, and the Missionary, who is available to the Otomo and any clan that converts to Christianity. The Yusugi have a plus 2% bonus to all Monk actions, and the Otomo have a reduced cost for Missionary actions. The third agent type is the Ninja and their more specialized female version, the Geisha, which is much harder to obtain in a campaign. Both are available to every clan. The Hattori have a plus 2% bonus to all Ninja actions. The agents work very much in a rock-paper-scissors way, where the Metsuke are the rock, the monks are the paper, and the ninjas are the scissors. Each agent, except for the Geisha, has a wide range of abilities and passives. For agents to rank up, they need experience. For each turn of sitting in a town, accompanying an army, or failing an action, they will get 3 experience points. And for each successful action, they will get 15 experience points. Just leaving them out in the field gives no experience points. Every time an agent ranks up, they gain 2 skill points for a total of 10 once they reach rank 6. Besides getting points to spend, they also naturally become better at everything they do upon ranking up. Invisible skill points, if you will. They gain one for each of their action types, but the game doesn't tell you about them. At rank 2, 4 and 6, you also get to choose one of two retainers, similar to a general. Lastly, upon performing certain actions, your agents will have the chance of gaining special traits, but these are few and far between. Now I'm going to go into more detail on each agent. I'll start by giving general information and follow it up with my personal recommendation on how to use the agents most effectively. Let's start with the Metsuke. Metsuke are recruited from the market building, which if upgraded to the max level, the Kabanakama will give Metsuke plus two ranks upon recruitment. This requires a very deep investment in the way of Chido, which I can't say I've ever reached in any of my campaigns. An easier way to recruit Metsuke at a higher rank is the school building, which initially gives plus one rank and when upgraded to a magistrate gives plus two ranks, which I definitely do recommend doing. On to the Metsuke abilities. Overseeing arms and towns has several benefits. A Metsuke will increase the loyalty of all generals on the same location, whether that be army or town, and they also keep towns happy as well as increase their tax rate. They also passively snuff out ninjas in the province they're in. The Metsuke can bribe garrisons, generals and armies. This can be very useful but extremely expensive, especially on the harder difficulties. If an enemy general is bribed to your side successfully, they will lose one loyalty due to disloyal tendencies. Metsukes can also apprehend other agents. They are strong against the ninja type but vulnerable to the monk type. In my opinion, there's only one way of using Metsuke effectively overseeing towns. Upgraded Metsuke can literally, and I mean literally in the literal sense of the word, make you thousands of Koku a turn if used correctly. As I said earlier, Metsuke passively increased tax rate in the town you placed him in. Each skill point you spend in the overseeing town skill will increase the tax rate even further. You want to place each of your five Metsuke in your five wealthiest towns. Don't put several in the same town as there is a diminishing returns factor. Every extra Metsuke you place in the same town increases the tax rate by less than the one before. There is a specific way I always rank up my Metsuke to maximize their efficiency. On the first rank, you want to max out Magistrate. When they get to rank 3, you only spend 1 point in Secret Policeman and save the other points. The reason for that is so that when you get to rank 4, you can spend all 3 points in Sensor right away. After that, you can do whatever you want with the points you get from future ranks. Apprehending is always a good idea so that they can defend themselves in case enemy agents make it to the towns your Metsukes are in. Whenever you get a retainer, always prioritize overseeing towns over everything else. If that isn't available, go for either apprehending or a lower chance to be assassinated. On to the next agent type, the monk. All three versions are in essence the same and I shall cover them as thus. I will point out discrepancies where necessary. Monks and missionaries, or M&Ms, are recruited from their respective religious building chain. Buddhist monks will gain plus two ranks upon recruitment from the fully upgraded Buddhist temple, the famous temple. The Ikka monks get no such bonus, and the missionaries can get either plus two or plus three depending on which chain they take when building up their chapel. Either way, none of these are really worth the investment in the way of Chi. The Buddhist monks also get plus one rank upon recruitment from the holy site, or plus two from the pilgrim hostel upgrade, which I do recommend getting. M&Ms passively convert the territories they're into the religion they represent. Placing them in an army or town will increase the morale of all units in the army and garrison, and reduces the chance of either army or town being bribed successfully. They also increase the happiness of the town in which they're present. M&Ms can incite revolts in towns not owned by the player. When a Buddhist monk succeeds, this will cause a Buddhist rebellion to spawn. If this rebellion succeeds at taking the town, the town will turn into a Buddhist rebel town. The same goes for the missionaries, except it will be Christian rebellion, and in turn a Christian rebel town. Where things get interesting is with the Ikko monk. Upon successfully inciting revolt, the Ikko rebellion will spawn. If this rebellion succeeds at taking the town, the town and the units that took it will become the property of the Ikko Iki, rather than turning into a rebel town. 
the Iko Iki are the only clan in the game to have this ability. Lastly, M&Ms can convert other agents. The wording is a little confusing, but upon success the converted agent will not join your clan. They will just disappear off the face of the earth. M&Ms are strong against Metsuke's but extremely vulnerable to the ninja type. They're also not very good at converting their religious counterpart and in turn aren't easily converted by them either. My opinion on the M&Ms is much less pronounced than it is on the Metsuke's and ninjas. I've never found them to be incredibly useful at one thing over everything else. I tend to use them quite passively, throwing them in recently acquired towns to keep the peace while my army marches on to the next town. They are one of the fastest ways to convert towns, so that's usually another thing I focus on when spending their points. Especially in campaigns where either the Yekowiki, the Otomo or other clans are converted to Christianity have a lot of land. Demoralizing enemy armies can be useful, but also very risky. More often than not, my monk ends up getting executed even when at higher levels, so it's just not really worth the risk. When leveling up monks, I usually focus on inspiring towns and converting provinces. The same goes for choosing retainers. If those aren't available as retainers, my next priorities are converting agents and lower chance to be assassinated. On to the final agent type, the ninja. Ninjas and geishas are recruited from the Sake Den building chain, with the ninja able to be recruited from the first level, but the geisha only able to be recruited from the fully upgraded Sake Den, the infamous Mizu Show by District. You're only able to field one geisha at a time as opposed to the five of every other agent. Ninja get plus two ranks upon recruitment from the infamous Mizu Show by District, which requires a decent investment in the way of chi. Ninjas also gain plus one rank upon recruitment from the Mountain Hideout building or plus two from the Burakumin village upgrade. Passively, ninjas are invisible to the enemy unless detected. When placed in an army, ninjas will increase the maximum movement range and prevent demoralization of your armies by enemy monks. When placed in a town, they will increase your line of sight and decrease the likelihood of a rebellion. Ninjas are able to sabotage both buildings as well as armies, which removes an army's movement points for a turn and makes them unable to reinforce, even if they're in range. They can also assassinate generals as well as other agents. Geisha on the other hand can't do any of that, except for assassinate, but even at level 1 they're much better at it than ninjas. They are, however, always visible to the enemy. Both ninjas and geishas are strong against monks, but extremely vulnerable to metsukes. Similar to the metsukes, I think ninjas have one ability that trumps all others, sabotaging armies. Especially on harder difficulties where enemies more often than not travel with two or more stacks together, being able to sabotage them and fight one stack at a time is a godsend. Don't get me wrong, assassination is nice, but since enemy armies tend to have more than one general in them, it's usually not particularly useful to try and assassinate all generals on an army, and they're good at assassinating monks by default. That being said, I still specialize in assassination after maxing out the one sabotaging army skill. Once again, similar to the Matsukes, I rank up my ninjas in a very specific way, starting with just a single point in saboteur, and saving the second point. When getting to rank 3, you put all 3 points in misdirection, the only sabotaging army skill available. After this, you max out the entire right side of the tree, which is all based on assassination. Just make sure not to put 2 points in exotic weapons. If you do that, you won't have enough points to max out Notorious Killer. When it comes to the Geisha, you'll want to focus her survivability skills. She's already an excellent assassin, so you want to make sure she actually survives to be able to perform those assassinations. Finally, some closing words. To be honest, in most of my campaigns, my Metsuke's and M&M's don't reach max level, due to them mostly sitting in towns and thus not getting experience. Despite this, I feel very confident with my agent builds. After the dozens of campaigns I've done and the many things I've tried, I can safely say that these are by far the best in my personal experience. I also didn't really go into detail on agent specific traits, it's a very difficult topic to go in depth on, and even after all these years there's no definitive list of traits. Just use this as a guideline though. Perform actions and you'll have a chance of getting a trait that makes you better at them. That's gonna do it for my tutorial on Shogun 2 Agents. I've received lots of topics to talk about already, but feel free to leave more in the comments if there's something you'd like me to go in depth on. Thank you very much for watching, hope you enjoyed, have a good day and goodbye.